Hello and welcome to MDG Media's coverage of the Belgian Open 2022. We have round, a round two front nine coverage for you. I'm Andrew Gum, and alongside me is Elias Lukonen. Hello guys, pleasure to be here watching this exciting round. Yep, it's moving day here in Belgium on the final stop of the PDJ Euro Tour. It's going to be some really exciting action and thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, so it was uh, round two, we had some interesting weather. The whole day was kind of raining on and off, so the players are definitely going to have some challenge by the weather. Yep, yeah, pretty soggy. This is brought to you by RPM Discs, that great manufacturer from New Zealand. And first on the card, hot round from the first round was Vile Ahokas. Yeah, really not surprising to see him play well. I feel like this is this is the type of course that he really can play well on. Great putter, smooth thrower. Yeah, super talented Finn from Turku. We also have Emil Barb from Geneva, Switzerland, currently rated 992. And Morten Brenna from Norway, Christian Sand, 987 rated. Yeah, also known as Brenna Explosion. Maybe that tells uh, something about this game. Okay. And a new name for me, Oskar Zuklinski from Poland. 9-11 rated. Yeah, so he really had a great first round, but I'm sure he really enjoys the the opportunity to play in the lead card. Let's hope he does well. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing this is his first time on uh, video coverage, being a 9-11 rated player. Yeah. So we'll see how he can handle that pressure, but he shot a seven down on the first round. That's very impressive. That's a great round. Yeah, that's probably well over a hundred points above his rating. Hole one, what a cool starting hole. It's a par three, 74 meter down, downhill island hole, right right in front of the clubhouse. Lots of uh, spectators there. A little bit of a, bit of a nerve, nervy hole, I guess, yeah. It is definitely, you know, especially being on lead card for round two. I'm sure all of these guys are gonna have a good amount of butterflies. But it's, the hole is really pretty simple. I'm sure all of these guys are going to go with some sort of a hyzer with a straight or an overstable disc. Really cool to see four different flags there represented. Four different nationalities. European disc golf is, is really fun to watch. Everyone's playing for national pride as well as their... Yeah. Exactly. Uh, ind independent performance, right? Looks like Will uh, pull this way harder, way to the right. Wow. He's, he's going to have a putt for par from 15 meters from the drop zone. That's kind of surprising. It wasn't even close, really. That is. I wonder if he might have some nerves or even some problems with the grip if it's raining. Could be. Could be first throw of the day and just, uh, just didn't come out quite right, I guess. Yeah. Uh, looked like a first throw of the day. Let's see if Emil can fix it. The lefty line, you can hang it out a bit wider. At least that's what it feels like. But Not he did wide. hang it out very wide. He knew it out of his hand. You could see yeah. he was very, very displeased with the release. Yeah. Oh. Spun around um, and, and no showed way. a lot of emotion there. Clearly, yeah. clearly knew it was... Uh, Let's give it not, up for not the shot he was Morten looking for. Brenner. Yeah, I think Morten's gonna have a really weird feeling about his shot since two guys have already completely missed their shot so maybe he might even get a bit more nervous seeing two guys fail in front of him yeah. he's going with a forehand high there it seems this looks better get up oh, oh yeah almost skipped up over the rails but not quite so he's going to be also ob and off that drive so over three on the island hit so far from the lead card yeah that's incredibly surprising i think i never would have bet on that yeah me either and see if oscar can show us how to show these uh nearly thousand rated players how, yeah. to, how to get it done he's he's looking high maybe spike heiser spike heiser is a good play here especially in the rain because the ground is pretty soft right now, so if you throw a high kind of a spike hyzer, the disc is definitely going to sit there. Good point, yeah. Aiming real high, pretty wide. The line looks pretty good. Oh, it's Ooh. real good. He almost aced it. Nice. Perfect shot. 
Just came right in front of the basket. Yeah. Chain high. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oscar really, he showed the way to these thousand red guys. Yeah. So Vile from the drop zone, giving it a nice run. Oh. Chains out left side. Good bid yeah. though. Thirsty. That was that was a great run. You would almost expect to or Vila to make that since he's an incredible spin putter. Yeah, his his range is excellent. He's he's a, a C two master for sure. Yeah. Oh, oh and that another catches one. a lot of chains and some nubs and Emil all also known for having a very consistent putt. Let's see Morton. He has a nice spin putt as well. Sponsored by Alpha Discs, looks like. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Let's see, that's a bit left. Yeah. yeah. We'll have some bogeys most likely, and we'll see if Oscar can connect for the bird. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a great start. Taking two strokes on the entire card. That's gonna make him tied for the lead momentarily, I guess, on the yeah. card at least. Uh, not sure what's happening on the on the other cards, but yeah, two stroke swing right out of the gates. That's that's more than you could ever really expect or ask for in yeah, this kind of situation. That's a lot. I'm sure these these other guys are kind of disappointed in themselves for not taking the birdie on this hole, but they'll have a lot of time to fix it. This is really a day that you just have to maintain your score. You know, everybody's gonna be struggling at the course because of the weather. So any birdie you can get is gonna push you up the leaderboard. Indeed. So hole one's in the books. We got three bogeys and a birdie and on to hole two. A oh, par three, 131 meter, pretty straight shot. Uh, OB lining left and right. Takes a pretty, pretty healthy rip to get it all the way up there. It does for sure. And uh, this hole is difficult for the fact that you really can't swing the disc from right to left or even left to right. The shot really has to be pretty straight. So I would imagine all the right-handed players are going to go with a, with a bit of a hyzer flip with a distance driver or even a fairway driver. Emil is going to have a bit more room to work it from left to right. Or This is trailing off a bit left side. Let's hope it can stay in bounds. Yeah, it does. No problem. Yeah. Looked like a kind of a safe play there. He's just trying to take the par here. Which par is very good on this hole. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely no shame in a par on this one. It can definitely get out of hand pretty quick if you end up OB or... Or, or yeah. Can't get too bad into the woods on the right or something. A little less going aggressive, but this is a bit too high. You can see the, the line was pretty much perfect, but the disc was thrown so high that it just couldn't hold the turn. The entire way, but he's gonna have a long, long putt from maybe circle two. A uh, one thing to to look for this hole is is the tee putt because today it was a uh, kind of slick because of the rain and the mud. But looks like these guys aren't slipping too bad. That was a pretty good shot there. Yeah, that was decent. Maybe if it was a little higher, it could have carried carried further towards the basket. But uh, sure, pretty good line anyway. Let's see, Morton. Morton is very talented with the, with the drivers, so I would expect a good shot out of him. Pretty, pretty good move on this, but is it too far right? Comes back a fair bit. Might, might be able to get sneaky through the trees there for a run at it. Yeah. I think he's going to have an abstracted look from the circle, too. And we see the card moving up the fairway. Doesn't look like it's raining right now since everybody has their umbrella at their bag. So a 50 meter approach here. Looks very good. That's how you do it, right yeah. off the pole. Love Beautiful. that. Yeah. Great I'm up. sure. Oh yeah, go ahead. Actually. I'll just saying great upshot, yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. I think Oscar's definitely going to have a bit less nerves after these first two holes going so good. Yeah, it's great to get off to a good start, you know. Vile sailed that one pretty far past over the basket. He might yeah. have some work left to do on the comebacker, I guess. Definitely. He has this very direct kind of a nose-up spin putt, which gives him great range 
Oh, that's a great one from mm. Morten. But yeah, Villa has really great range on the pots and he's great at potting in, in a headwind or in a sidewind. But he does have some comebackers if he misses. Yeah, he puts a lot of spin on them and they can definitely go pretty far if it doesn't hit anything. So Exactly. Emil also just barely missing from circle two. But yeah, that's a, that's a very, very common result on this hole to be putting for birdie on circle two and then kind of running for it and then just tapping in the par. Yep. Vila makes good on his comebacker. And you can see Oscar knows how this hole plays because he knows that he doesn't need the birdie here. So he just takes the par and moves on. Smart. Smart to play it that way if you if, if you don't have the that kind of distance or if you, you analyze it as being just too much risk to, to try to attack, I guess. Yeah. I'm interested to see if he actually has the distance to go for the hole or if he's just playing safe because that could be... Uh, either one could be the case here. That's true, yeah. We'll, we'll find out soon enough, I guess. Here's a uh, hole three. It's a par three, 106 meters. Pretty straight shot. Again, a lot of OB to contend with and a really pretty green basket perched up on this stump and uh, a lovely backdrop. Yeah, this is a great hole. It's it's really a simple hole. You just have to throw your mid-range or fairway driver perfectly straight. Don't let it fade to the left too much or turn to the right. Otherwise, you're going to be OB. Oscar going with the star eagle. Yeah, that looks perfect. Flying like an eagle. Yeah, and great shot. Up to the bullseye. Beautifully done. You really could see it out of the hand. That was going to be perfect the entire way. Your line. Ville is going with a slower disc here. Looking for the straighter flight. That needs to turn a bit. That's heading towards the left side OB. Yeah, I think that was his envy, perhaps. But he didn't get the line quite right. Left it a little bit left. And uh, that can be a bit of a tricky spot over yeah. there. And he went OB as well, so he's going to have to pitch up for bogey, most likely. Emil with uh, mid-range, I think. It's kind of challenging the left side, but that's going to be just perfect. Great shot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Park job. That was so clean and smooth. Yeah, that was great. That's actually, I'm not sure what the disc mold is, but that's the mid-range that Emil throws pretty much on most straight shots. He really throws it incredibly well. Yeah, that was money. Right on the mark. Pure all the way, and uh, he's going to have an easy birdie. Yeah. This looks overcooked. That could be right side OB if it doesn't kick out. I think that's going to be OB for Morton. If not, it's kind of a miracle. Yeah. No yeah. OB graphic here, so he might be safe, I think. Not I sure. got a little lucky. <laughs> no, what? Not sure what he's... I'm not sure what he said there, <laughs> but... Morton is a... Uh, He's a very animated guy on the course, you know. He's not only playing it for the score. He also has a lot of emotion, a lot of fun when he plays. Nice. Looks like he might have got lucky to kick back and just be on the line. Yeah. So he's probably going to be able to save his par with that up and down. Let's hope so. I was in this exact same spot this same round where Vile was, and I made the putt. It was a, quite a highlight. <laughs> yeah. Looks Good. like he's running for it. No, not really. Good, it was a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. He leaves that a little bit short and left. So. He's up again, so he must have a bit of a comeback here. Yeah, that should be no problem for him. Yeah, thanks. Good for the bogey. I'm kind of surprised how Rusty Villa looks at the start of the round, but I'm pretty sure he's going to get it together pretty soon. Yeah, after shooting the hot round at nine down on day one, he's, he's, uh, coming out with two bogeys on, on the first three holes so what do you I wonder what that's all about you think he's feeling some nerves or maybe just the weather and everything I'm sure the weather has uh, has a part in it yeah yeah but that was a great birdie from Oscar you know really starting strong two down through three is pretty much ideal yeah especially in these conditions yeah that's the best you could ever hope for and an amazing birdie as well there from it Emil to get back to par. Just totally parked it with that mid-range straight shot. Yeah, no stress there. Especially in a bit of a wet weather, it's great to have no putt. Closer the better. 
Hole four is a par three at 97 meters. Great shot, a little bit tighter gap than the last one. You don't want to be early left, that's for sure. And then there's OB, both sides and wrapped around the back back side of the basket as well. It's uh, elevated quite high on that pyramid type logo uh, base. Yeah, it's it's really important on this hole that you control the angle of the disc because if you leave it on too much hyzer or too much anhyzer, you're going to be OB most likely. This looks to be a bit right, but I think it's short enough that it's not going to be OB. Yeah, that was that's circle two. It's not really that makeable of a putt with the elevated basket and the OB inside the circle behind. But he's going to have an easy par. Emil with the mid-range here. A smooth swing from him. Definitely yeah. has that ultimate background, right? Yeah. Yeah, I heard from Emil that he has played ultimate for for a good time before playing disc golf. So he does have that smooth kind of throwing motion with the mid-range and putter. Uh-oh. Ooh, lucky to get through that. That's kind of the worst place to be on this hole. Yeah. But he's still, still in a little bit of a tough spot. Are at best, I guess, from there. Yeah, he's going to be happy with the par there. Martin going really high, but luckily the disc is understable. This is still going to challenge the left side OB, I think. Works out all right. He's inside the circle for a long look at birdie. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot of trust in that disc. He put it really high and even on a bit of a high there. Yeah, that was a cool, cool looking shot. It must have been a really flippy disc because it, it was so high and he even had the nose up a little bit, but it kept the turn all the way and came down pretty soft as well. Yeah. Eli almost looked like he's going for that. Okay, maybe not. Just putting it close. Yeah. He's lucky to have uh, just, uh, just a jump at the approach from there. I'm sure he's just waiting for his round to actually start. Yeah, definitely a bit of a slow start, but he'll be happy with the par here after missing his line a little bit there off the tee. Just to pitch up there and uh, see, if, see if Morton's feeling it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Incredible. That was very smooth, very confident. Exactly. Great birdie there, getting himself back to par on the round. Yeah, he's going to be happy with that. You know, after starting a bit weak, it's really important to get that first birdie in pretty early. Yeah, and those circle's edge putts in the, in the early part of the round can go a long way for your confidence on the green. Yeah. Meal with the same. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Corner pocket gets it to swirl in. Yeah. Nice one. So two birdies on this hole is pretty good. It's That's very good. Two birdies, two pars, that's... You know, that's definitely better than average, yeah. as you would expect from the lead card, obviously. Right. You can see that's another showcase of Emil's touch with the putter, able to drop the disc in the basket with almost no chains. Yeah, that's nice. Hole five, par four, 172 meters, moving left to right. That OB really comes into play on the left side if you if you juice it a little bit. You also don't really want to get tucked into this right side stuff either because it's pretty thick. Ideal landing zone somewhere around here so you can line yourself up with the gap on your second shot. Pretty technical hole. It is. This is a great hole. You really have to... The first shot is really just a setup. You know, you don't want to go too big on the first shot because if you go long, then you're really not going to have anything for the second shot. So you want to go with kind of a tight-ish hyzer. I think this looks perfect from Emil. Yeah, that is absolutely perfect. You couldn't really draw it up any better. Nicely done. Perfect placement and does shape up good for the lefty backhand, that's for sure. It is, yeah. It's a left, left to right shape, so Orton is actually going roller, which is a good play if you have a very understable disc. Looks like he's throwing it very well as well. Oh yeah, that'll do. That's perfect. Those are two world-class drives on this hole. You're not really going to see drives much better than those two. Now we got a uh, righty forehand and shot. This looks great as well. Wow. So three really great drives, different different shots, and uh, yeah. everybody's in prime position. That's impressive. Let's see if Vila can keep this up. 
A bit low, but that's going to skip big, I think. Lands yeah. up pretty nicely, a little shorter than the others, but still should be lined up with the gap pretty well. Yeah, I would consider those four pretty much four perfect drives. Yeah, great to get off the tee well on this one. Otherwise, you're kind of scrambling the rest of the way, it feels like. Exactly, yes. And especially since the gap for the second shot is kind of tight. And even if you miss the gap, you could kick OB left. So it is important to get a good drive here. Villa has a bit of a turnover. He misses the line for a bit, but he's going to have an easy par and maybe even a run for the birdie from 20 meters. Pretty lucky to fight through all that stuff there on that right side. It's pretty yeah. thick. Yeah, I think he's he's going to be happy that he's he's gotten that much distance on that, that shot. This looks great. Just stay a bit left. Oh, hits the last guardian tree. Decent reaction, though. He's still inside the circle, I think, from there. Yeah. That's, that that's going to be makeable. Yeah. This is a really strong shot for, for Emil. You know, being able to go with a slow putter here. Ooh, looks yeah. good. Eagle, come on. Almost running oh. the eagle there. Wow. Wow. Beautiful line. That's a great shot. Well, it's a little past, but shouldn't be too much left. Six meters or so. Morton. This might be the best drive I've seen on this hole. He has just uh, just like a 60 or 55 meter shot to the basket. And he executes the upshot perfectly. Perfect job. Happen birdie on this one. That must be a great feeling. Yeah. He's going to be very happy with that. After, after the bogey start, he's going to be under par of the five holes, which is incredible. Relay, long range spinner, just comes up a bit short and right, but he'll be tapping in for the easy par anyway. Let's see, this would be a great birdie to make. He has an open look. I wondered if the tree was gonna be in his way. Oh, mm. almost. A little bit short. That that was to go three down on the round. Yeah. This guy really showed up to this event to play. Exactly. This is Emil for the lead. Yeah, in the middle. Perfect putt there. So he's he's got himself a pretty good round going after that slow start. Yeah. Three in a row. Turkey time. That's gobble a gobble. Great three holes to take the turkey. You know, especially the front nine on this course is definitely the harder of the two nines. So anytime you can take three birdies in a row on the front nine, it's going to be incredibly good. That's true. Moving on to hole six, par four, 165 meters, straight long tunnel. Just kind of hit the gap. First things first, it, it looks a lot longer than it uh, really is, but if you can get yourself anywhere up here on this road or a little bit further, that's fine. You know, anywhere in the middle, I guess is ideal. Yeah, this is a great hole. It's a, it's a difficult hole for the fact that the gap is very small. It's the drive doesn't need to be very long. You can just throw your putter or your mid-range. Just try to hit the gap, and if you hit the gap, you're going to have a chance for the birdie. But if you miss the gap, you're going to have big trouble. Emil going with the same mid-range, it looks like. He kind of missed the gap, but gets a pretty decent kick in the middle of the fairway. Morten looks to be going with the throwing putter. Also not the worst possible kick, but both of those guys are going to be fighting for their pars from there. Let's see if Oscar can continue the solid play. Oh, oh really early miss there. That's kind of worst case scenario on this hole, I guess. Yeah, that's gonna be incredibly difficult. Didn't gain any distance and he's way off the fairway, so he's gonna have to really kick it into scramble mode and, and try to. I guess par would be really, really surprising from that. I don't play. think par is possible from there. He's Maybe. gonna be deep. You might be right. 
Looks like Vile missed the line as well, and he's off on the left side. I think it's it's probably difficult to hit this gap with the slick tee pad in the rain. Yeah, I, I had putts for birdie every round on this hole, and I missed them all from inside the circle. Can you believe that? I really wanted it so bad. <laughs> it's definitely it's a big achievement to have the putts inside the circle. Yeah, I, I, would, I hit the gap fine. I just couldn't finish the job. I guess twice they were obstructed by tree, but still should have made those birdies. Yeah. This hole also has a bit of a difficult green. If you go any long off the basket, you're going to have obstructed putt. Yeah, and even short left, there's some, uh, some groups of trees. Yeah. That I, I kept ending up a little bit behind and I had to kind of straddle out. But yeah, everybody's in scramble mode here on our lead card, which is kind of surprising that nobody hit the gap, I guess. Yeah. Well, Emil with a good kind of escape shot from here. Just the position play. Now he's in the sweet spot. He's going to have a... Pretty simple shot to the basket from there. Morton using that opening on the left side to get himself up into a pretty good spot, but oh no, it's rolling. Ah, yeah, that's a decent roll. He he okay. only got closer to the basket. He's gonna have a soft hyzer with the mid range or putter from there. Eli moving it left to right with the backhand. Needs to stay off that tree. Ooh. Ooh, that's a bad kick. He's yeah. going to have almost nothing from there. He might have to go up that back door side. Yeah, because there is a back door on this hole. If you kick left, you can kind of scramble through the back door with a forehand and maybe get yourself a putt. Yeah, with like a low skip shot or something. Yeah. But it's, it's not ideal. It's not what you're going for. Looks like Oscar is he's going to be throwing four from the bushes. So looks like a very likely double bogey for him. Neil a bit wide on the approach. Ooh, that's yeah. going to be in the back door as well. Yeah, he kicked into that kind of island of trees in, the, in between the two lines. And he's going to have to keep scrambling. We might see some big numbers on this one. Yeah. I'm surprised if we see even a single par on this hole. Yeah, good point. Even though Oscar has started pretty solid on this round, you know, two down after five is a, that's a great start. I think his body language still tells tells me that he's a bit nervous, which is definitely understandable. I would be very nervous if I was him. Circle's edge. Yeah, that's a crafty little shot from there. Very touchy to go with the forehand Anheuser. Now we see how far Relay kicked. He's in a bit of a tight spot. Does everything he can, but it's not quite enough to get anywhere near the green. Yeah, that's a tough spot. He was going through the back door there, but not really possible to reach the basket from there. Oscar. Oh, he catches yeah. another tree. Still, still pretty far off. Circle two, but maybe uh, might be obstructed. Yeah, you can see Stian carrying for Morton. And it looks like the rain has started a little bit now. Now the umbrella. Yeah, the rain was on and off the whole day. So at some point during the round, it might have just started raining very hard. And at some point, it might have almost been kind of sunny. Where is Villa going here? Whoa. Didn't quite see that finish, but uh he had to get, get really creative with a really high sort of spike hyzer and oh he's he's making that uh that kind of trick putt where you lift your front front foot and uh release the disc while it's in the air and he nails it. Wow, incredible putt. Really taking advantage of the of the rule. You know, if you lift your front foot with your back foot behind your mini, if you lift your front foot while you're throwing, then it's legal. Yeah, good to be aware of that for that type of a lie. Smart, uh, smart golf in there from Vila, able to save the bogey after some really big struggles on the, on the hole. But uh, nice highlight putt there to finish it. That that bid was just a little off, and he's gonna have a little bit of work still to do on the comebacker. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a pretty nervy comebacker for a seven. I think. Yikes. Let's see, Emil. Oh, just misses a little bit, a little bit high right. 
Yeah, that looked pretty confident. You know, it wasn't it wasn't too low. It was the uh, chain height and good speed. Same thing for Morton. Yeah. Okay, so the struggles continue and we are certainly going to see some big numbers on this hole. Yeah, it looks like Villa just big putted all of them. For sure. Ooh, that almost came out the basket. I had a lot of pace on it, but luckily it stays in there and he's going to have himself a bogey, so not the worst case. Just a single bogey is not that terrible in this hole, especially in these conditions. It's definitely one of the hardest holes on the course. Looks like Oscar is putting with the Luna. This craft, Paul Macbeth disc. This would be very important to make. And he does it. Ooh, it's still a oh, that's an eight. Man. Yeah. Not what you're looking for, but good putt there. It could have been could have been even worse, I yeah. guess. Yeah. I guess eight is better than nine. True. Neither score what you're looking for, especially after being two down there like that. He really struggled on this one, but he did he did hit really early and he was in such yeah. terrible position. Double bogey for Emil, so that kind of slows his uh, momentum a little bit, but hopefully he can get back on track. Hole seven, par three, 84 meters. Nice tunnel shot with a, a bunch of guardian trees here late that you need to navigate through and then very elevated green, built up terrace, five different tiers, and uh, really, really pretty green. It is, yeah. The the green is definitely, it, it's a beautiful green. On this hole, you're kind of trying to hit the right side gap and try to miss the middle tree, which... Pretty good. Yeah. You know, most of the time, if you throw it towards the middle tree, you're probably going to miss it. So that's, I feel like that's the most common play on this hole. Just aim for the middle and hope for the yeah. best. Yeah. Just aim for the middle tree with like a straight to overstable fairway driver. That or, looks exactly like what Relay's doing. But he yeah. kicks off that tree and not the worst kick though. He's he's pin high and he can kind of maybe give that a bit if he wants. Sure. Especially with his floaty spin, but if he puts a bit of Anheuser on the disc, he's going to be able to run that pretty well. Emil with the left hand, he could go for the... Oh, Ooh, that's a terrible kick. But he was going for the left side gap, which is definitely more open if you hit it. It just brings that exact tree into play early on the fairway. Yeah, that's pretty much worst case scenario. A slight bit of grip lock or maybe just a late release a little bit, but uh wasn't too far off, but the kick was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Oscar's going for the left side as well. Oh, this looks pretty good, if not just a little too high maybe. Yeah, definitely too high. Yeah. The branches are pretty pretty heavy on this hole. So if you hit pretty much if you hit any branches, you're probably gonna be knocked down. Yeah, pretty thick woods here in this lovely park in Brian Alou. Great place for disc golf though. It is, it is. It's definitely one of the prettier courses we play. Yeah, great design as well by Jean Louis. He's he's done a, a really a lot of work and a, a lot of thoughtful design has gone into it. It is, yeah. You know, the area is kind of small for a disc golf course, but he has really taken advantage of all the room they have there. Indeed. This is a little bit right side. I think he would have wanted to try to get that a little bit more uh, more angle, more Anheuser perhaps to get it get it to move left. But Yeah, I think so. Let's see if we like, can run this for a bit. I no, he doesn't want any just part up. Yeah, just taking his par, which is okay on this one. Morten is definitely going to run this, I think. He looks determined to make it. You just have to put the disc very high, almost over the basket on this hole. Yes, as you can see, it's so far uphill that even though the putt look, looked pretty good out of the hand, it just didn't have the energy to get to the basket. Exactly. You need to aim like at the band or even even higher, I guess, to, yeah. try to, to make sure you get it all the way there. You had quite a highlight on this hole this round, am I right? I did... It's oh that's a great one. But actually on this hole, if you're left side of the basket, even if you're pretty far away, you can really run the putt because it's so far uphill. And I was able to make it from 30 meters. Nice one. Oh, good putt there. That's a good putt. That was for bogey. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's right. 
Well, the struggles continue for Oscar, but good putt to finish the hole anyway. It could have been yeah. even worse. That's a good cleanup, you know. You could really see it from the from the angle that we were filming from that. He really put it above the basket and the disc just dropped in the chains. Great putt from Emil there for the par. Yeah, that's good. Right on the mark. I really like his style. Yeah, Emil he's a he's a great putter, you know, very consistent putt. He doesn't he doesn't airball a lot of putts. Usually if he misses it's just barely off the chains or barely low. And here we are on hole eight. The par three, 80 meters, pretty straight, a little bit downhill. Green runs away pretty quick, but you just kind of want to hit your line straight and try to get it to land somewhere a little bit short of the basket and scoot up, scoot up near to the. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah. You know, you don't want to throw anything too fast here. I'm sure most of these guys are going putter. This is just your regular putter shot. Kind of hit it straight, and if you hit the line, you're gonna be inside the circle for sure. Uh oh. That's, that's not hitting the line. No, it's pretty far ah, off there. So Gonna have quite a lot of work to do to save the par. Yeah. Actually, interestingly enough, Villa is going with an MD2 here. So he's not choosing to go with the putter, but he feels really comfortable with that kind of understable mid-range. Like he tugged it over a little bit too much though. Maybe he needed a, a touch more hyzer or, or a little bit more left side, but he gets a good kick back into the fairway and it shouldn't be any trouble for the par at least. Yeah. He's maybe even going to be able to run it for a bit from there. Yeah, it could be a could be a long comebacker if he misses it though. The green does sort of slope away. That's true. This looks clean. That looks great. Oh my goodness. Oh, almost running for the ace. Wow, that was tracking just uh, about a meter right of the basket, chain yeah. high and everything. So I wonder if he hit the cameraman there. It's something and checked up inside the circle. That was blown pretty far past. This is perfect. That's how you do it. That looks still a bit fast. It's going to skip for a bit, but that's a very good shot. Yeah, and there's that log there that collect most of them on... Or not, not log, that uh, stump that can collect a lot of the shots that end up a little bit left side. So yeah. He, he's he's able to check up inside the circle for a birdie look. Morten, this is very scrambly. He's, so he's on the right side of the fairway trying to go forehand hyzer. Kind of goes through the back door and he's going to have... A circle two putt for the par. There's kind of a lot of stuff on that left side. We hope he gets a clean line at it. Vila certainly does run it. Yeah. Wow. Great run there. You could really see the floaty spin putt. He's got that perfect perfect style to run that putt from that distance. And, and yeah, doesn't have to worry too much about the comebacker. Especially if you're hitting chains like that. Exactly. And just, yeah, just short from a meal. Kind of as I just accidentally mentioned, you know... Emil, a great putter, but sometimes leaves the putts a bit low there. Hold on. Oh, Ooh. air ball from Oscar. That must be a grip lock or something. That looks, the motion looked very normal, but the disc just didn't come out of his hand. It could be the, it could be the moist condition as well. Yeah, sometimes the fingers start to prune up a little bit after uh, after being kind of soggy for, yeah. for a while, and maybe the, the release doesn't feel the same as normal. Yeah, that's the problem in the rain often. Also, when you, if you have a bit of wet wing, wet fingers, and the grip isn't as great as normal, then you kind of start to. You you know, have a more, more strength in the grip, right? And then you're yeah, gonna yeah. grip lock it more Changes easily. Changes the touch, yeah. I guess. It, yeah. A good point. I hadn't really thought of it like that, but that's that makes a ton of sense. Comebacker for Oscar, he, he's sort of starting to struggle a little bit after a great start. See if he can regain his composure on this putt, but it's going to be a bogey, top band. Yeah, that's a really tough bogey to swallow. Not the hole you want to bogey, I mean, one of the easier ones on the track, I guess. It is. Especially it's after being inside the circle off the yeah. tee, you know, I mean, hope he can find his rhythm on the green soon. Uh, Hole nine, really tough par four. Only 152 meters, but the distance is kind of deceptive on that. It's way uphill after a really tricky tee shot where you got to move left to right as, as far as possible and try to be somewhere on this path if you can, because you can see how tight the, the line is going up and it's very uphill. You don't see the slope here, but it's extremely steep up to the basket. Yeah, even though after the perfect drive, you're probably going to have just 
about 60 meters to the basket. It does really feel like 80 meters, more than 60 meters. Let's see, the play here is it's just a tight, low forehand hyzer, which Morton is definitely going to show us, I think. Yeah, he threw it a bit too flat, so he's going to challenge the left side. He hit the left side of corner tree, but he's in the middle of the fairway, so he's still going to have a shot at the basket, but it's just going to be a very long way there. Relay opted for that forehand as well. Looks like a Halo Destroyer. Yep, Heimberg stamp, I believe. Could be a great kick there. Yeah, he's kind of on the right side of the fairway, but he's going to have a good look to the basket from there. Nice lefty hole. It like is. Like a pretty fast driver from Emil. I could imagine if Emil hits this perfect, he's going to be way down there. That looks great. Oh. Uh, he to beat that one, he could have been in pretty good position, but uh, it's going to be pretty far back now. Yeah. He had, the, he had the perfect shape on it. It was just a bit inside. The Oscar. Low forehand, maybe a little too low. A little bit too low for sure. But he's also kind of in the fairway. He might have a, a tree or two to contend with, but he's not not gonna have a lot of trouble a lot of big trouble from there I don't think unlike Emil he has all the trees in the way but he does hit the gap very well that's a good shot oh he nails it nicely done wow he's even putting for the birdie from there it's yeah. a very long putt but maybe not putting he's like 40 meters away but that's a good shot good shot from there great recovery shot for sure but yeah still still a fair bit of work to do he can Maybe give it a chance, but par is, par is a good score on this one as well. It is, yes. You could see Oscar, he had to kind of watch out for the tree in right on the right side of his sly, just not to smack his hand into the tree. Well, this is high and fading early, and not sure where it ended up, but it can't be good. Yeah, that's trouble. Let's see if we'll... Uh, he has good position to even go for the birdie here. Pretty smooth forehand. A little heavy on the hyzer maybe, but... Gets most of the way up there. He's going to be a little obstructed, but just outside the circle. Pretty good effort. Yeah. That was, uh, that was a good shot, but just a bit too inside. So he's probably going to have a, have to pitch up for the par. But as we said, par is good on this hole. You're not really sad after you take a par on this hole. Ooh. Oh, he was running for the basket. Yeah. Though. I like the attempt there, but now he's in a little bit of trouble going long and he's he might might have pretty tough lie. Morton with the low power forehand shot and he gets all the way up to the circle. Nicely done. Yeah, talking about tough tough lies, that was definitely one of them. Emil is actually within jump at distance. Let's see if he can give this a run. Yeah, it comes up just short. Right on line, anyway. Yeah, he also has pretty good distance on his putt. You know, from longer range, he kind of does more of a putt and a throw, like, combined. So he really gets good range on that putt. That was Vile pitching out. Put it pretty close, I guess. It'd close happen. enough for him, for sure. It'd be an easy par, I guess. Now we see where Oscar ended up after blowing past. Ah, oh. mm, almost. Good try. Just kind of bounces out off the rim and Morton. Wow, nicely done for the par. A little bit left, but good catch from the basket. Morton is so confident with the putter. He's really putting great speed on the disc. He looks super focused too. He really, really kind of aiming directly at, at a specific point. Yeah, he does. He has that focused kind of energy. Mm. Can go a long way on the green for sure. That's a tough front nine from Bill, having zero birdies, but he's a great player. I'm sure he's going to pick it up in the back nine. Yeah, plus three on the Front nine, uh, definitely not what he was looking for, especially after coming out with the lead, but 
plenty of room to score on the back nine. He's going to have to turn things around. Salvage the day. Bogey putt there on the comebacker from Oscar. He's plus five on the round after a really great start. He really kind of uh, hit the struggle bus at the end of this nine, didn't he? Yeah, that's tough. But honestly, I think the last four holes, you know, they can cause you the most trouble. Definitely, because they're in the woods. You have to hit some very tight lines there. Yeah, that does it for the front nine. Here we see our scores from the card. Like you said, Relay unable to birdie, but uh, I'm gonna try to turn things around. Emil, pretty solid. He's in the lead for the card, but I'm, I'm sure there's some people out there doing work. Yeah, Emil leading the card with even par front nine. Quite surprising to see that much struggle from our lead card. Here you see through nine, Emil still at the tie for the lead. Ralph and yourself, Elias, have gotten your, yourself into the tie for the for the lead. How, how's that round going? Yeah, I I was able to have a really great front nine in the rain. Six down through nine? Yeah, that's pretty much ideal in these conditions. Let's well see. Done. That's really impressive. Come on back for the back nine of the Belgian Open 2022.